just put up one today about the enormous die-off of sea otters. They are dying so fast, people can't believe it. Um, let me see if I can find a quote here. I was looking for this. Hundreds and hundreds of sea otters have been found dead in the uh, Catch, Ketchamac Bay area near Homer this year. That's, uh, I assume, in Alaska. They are unable to figure it out. It is, as they say, an unsettling mystery, killing off some of Alaska's favorite furry animals. Well, they better get used to it. Here's another story. Unusually high numbers of sea otter deaths reported in Kachemak Bay, same location but a different source. More recently, animals have appeared otherwise healthy and seem to have died very quickly, said Dr. Kerry Getz. Dr. Getz went on to say, It's scary to know there's something out there in the wild that we may or may not be able to do anything about. Remember, these animals are dying very quickly. Okay? What do you think it is, folks? Is it that they swim out and encounter some radiation and die? No. It's called bioaccumulation. They're eating and eating and accumulating and accumulating, and they get to a a certain threshold, and they die. It's that simple. With us, uh, as always, Yoichi Shimatsu from Hong Kong this time. You there, Yoichi? Yeah, I am. I am. Sad story about these otters, cute little animals, uh, eat mainly shellfish. Shellfish, as you know, filter out algae from seawater. So they're loaded. Uh, yeah, you know, massive amounts actually. You know, they see the water is pretty clear. So, uh, otters finally built. You know, they hit the limits of toleration. And again, we have these heart problems, these heart seizures in marine am- uh, mammals Correct. that we seen in seals, in uh, sea lions, and we also see in humans in Japanese and uh, the Japanese. Oh, they're, di- they're dying. They're dying in. They're dying in the high they're schools in Japan. The kids. They're dying. They're just killing yeah. over sudden cardiac arrest, very similar to what the otters are facing. The sudden, do- a sudden you know, limit of toleration hit, and then suddenly That's you right. see uh, whole clusters of living organisms, uh, whether mammals, sea mammals, or humans, mm-hmm. start killing over and dying, and um, very quickly. It was very hard to save them. So the Japanese school system uh-huh. is trying to rush out yeah. these. Um, defibrillators, you know, basically the devices that get your heartbeat going, you know, again. How how are they going to save them? Even if they can use a defib on them, how are they going to save them, Yochi, when they're... they're... Well, it's hard because there's internal bleeding in the muscles of the heart, lungs, wherever you have very small capillaries, this is where you get the clotting. Uh, that goes on radiation, causes mm-hmm. the clotting. Mm-hmm. And this is all documented, by the way. You know, I mean, there are NIH, National Institutes of Health in the United States, studies on the effects of radiation on the heart system because of many uh, cancer patients, for example, if they get too much radiation in their mm-hmm. therapy, you know, too much is inserted, they will die also or suffer heart you know, uh, seizures, sudden heart seizures. Yeah. So same problem. Uh, right now, the rate for, among Japanese is the population half the size of the United States of these uh, cardiac arrests is seventy thousand per year. Okay, seventy thousand Japanese per year. And this is heart teachers. all ages, yeah. not just elderly all ages, people. Uh, mainly, mainly the elderly because you have a weaker heart there. Mm-hmm. Uh, they ingest a lot more food and so on. Uh, that would be radioactive, you know, the more exotic forms of food, seafood, so on. But children, uh, they're not saying the f- uh, full figure, but it's well over a 1,000. So very unusual rate for primary school kids, high school sure. kids, to be just keeling over and dying of a heart attack. I mean, think back when you were a kid, how many children, you know, Nobody, got, nobody school, died of heart attack. How many attacks. kids, like, dropped dead on a basketball court or, you know, no. in the middle or anywhere? You know, very, very few, if any. Mm-hmm. We're beginning so we're to see it about, in high school football games over here. These kids are dying after getting hit. Nobody can figure exactly, it out. Exactly. Exactly. Playing on basketball courts. This is a radiation problem in the States. States is very well advanced by itself without the Fukushima uh, crisis, but with the added 
you know, a tipping point of Fukushima yeah. on the environment and the air and the water and uh, just, uh, you know, just general exposure, you know, that you're one, one is getting. Very serious problem expanding now. And, again, uh, you know, the government, the health ministries and all can attribute it to uh, heart attack, but they won't tell you what is the cause. What is the cause of the heart failure? And yeah, they won't tell you that. And Can they, they know darn you, well. Yeah, yeah. They know darn well. They're not going to tell you. It's right there in the NIH. They have to know. Like, These are PhDs. They're not stupid. They understand yeah, what's going I mean, on. Autopsies are often performed. And, yeah. of course, the results get stuffed in the drawer. Because nuclear, anything nuclear is a strategic issue covered under national security laws. And that's why we're having such a devil of a time fighting against this devil of nuclear national security, which is actually killing far more people around the world yeah. than, let's say, uh, you know, uh, nuclear bomb tailing down from North Korea, Iran, or whatever, right. wherever. Right. Uh, far more people are being killed by the homegrown nuclear energy, nuclear we- weapons development in the U.S. and Japan, and I will emphasize nuclear weapons development in Japan. Uh, obviously, good. that's been going on, contributed to oh, the yeah. whole Fukushima oh, yeah. disaster. Oh, yeah. And that's why 70,000 Japanese are just popping off every year, and the numbers are rising. So, obviously, we're not seeing this thing like peaking. It's growing. It's widening. Every year, there's been a new record in number of heart failure in Japan since 311. Before that, the trend was in decline. It's been in rise for the last four years, and we expect another boom this coming year. Yeah, I agree. Now, All right. Let's, now, interesting. Uh, go uh, ahead. Uh, yeah. No, you go ahead. Well, what's interesting is that at the same time, Tokyo University's invented a bunch of full body scanners for children. They claim to have measured 2,700 children in the Fukushima area, residents of the Fukushima area, and said none of them show any sign of ingestion of cesium. And how is this to be? How is this? Well, first, let's just get to some of the dirty tricks. We discussed more than four years ago, uh, did I not, when I said that uh, the Japanese government after Fukushima, they blocked the importation of all foreign uh, detection, radiation detection technologies from oh, those Oh, you absolutely did. I remember that did very I well. Say, say yeah. that? We talked with farmers groups who were trying yeah. to get a uh, larger you know, detection system that would analyze specific isotopes. They were uh, told uh, point blank, none are going to be imported, are going to come through customs. We noted also, and I think the Fukushima workers, you know, we saw a whole spate of reports the first few years that dosimeters were rigged. We found out in the school, dosimeters were rigged. On Massive children. scandal. Okay. Massive. Yeah, calibration. The calibration was lowered purposely, yeah. intentionally. Yep. And we're talking about Tokyo University. That's a prime university medical school in Japan. Totally linked with the government. This is part of the government elite system. It's something like Harvard or MIT you huh. know, uh, uh, uh-huh. put together. Uh-huh. These guys are obviously collaborating. Uh, other problems, of course, most of the children, oh, well, many of them actually had been evacuated from Fukushima, and they brought them into the study. In other words, kids were pulled out within weeks, went to Okinawa or Osaka. These were included in the study. So we have a dirty study already of different cohort groups, you know, not just kids who stayed in Fukushima. Most of the children, and they don't give a specific age range, they said up to 11 years of age, they use the word children. But in fact, most were preschoolers. And what is the diet of preschoolers? Wow. Mainly foreign baby formula, mm-hmm. you know, baby formula mm-hmm. from the U.S. or Europe. Yeah. So obviously, they don't get the vegetables and fish and meat from Fukushima, right? Or from that region. They're, they're eating strictly foreign imported and the mothers are very very careful there i've talked to them these kids are very much like surrounded you can't really talk to children there because they're so surrounded by the parents and teachers especially mm-hmm. the kindergarten mm-hmm. and uh, primary schools who are trying to protect these kids but obviously this was a selected group because remember i told you when i was there in that first year in the first right it was a very hot summer after uh, uh, the Fukushima, because all the radiation in the air was heating the place up. The place sure. was being uh, cooked, you know, were being microwaved. All the children were forced to play outside in the in the school yards, you know. In the I school, couldn't believe uh, that. Playground. I could not believe yeah. it. Dusty uh, for hours in the hot yeah. sun. When you can see radiation sky, these weird 
effects in the sky. Strange colors, you know, strange taste in your mouth, and the kids are outside. And oh, the other I problem remember. that I mentioned to you was the massive amount of dust on the roadways because these dump trucks coming out of... Back and forth, on. back and forth. Yep. That without covers. And you know, they're just passing by homes, passing by schools, restaurants, Just everything. blowing du- micro dust everywhere. Just amazing. And, and I wore a mask. I, I told you I wore a mask most of the time when on those roads. But I was considered a very rude person, you know, because the idea <laughs> is we should <laughs> not remind people of the disaster by wearing uh-huh. a mask. Everyone should try to pretend that everything's normal. So all the kids were forced to walk to school or to their bus stop without face masks as these trucks are going by. And every time a truck would go by, there'd be this huge surge. And I, I, I've discussed in some articles oh, I wrote for your site, surge of radiation. Yeah. There had to be inhalation of cesium, sure. no doubt, and all other isotopes, no doubt about it. Tokyo University is lying, just like every institution in Japan that's somehow connected with the government, is pathologically lying and is participating in the mass murder of their own citizens and also the foreigners. Who are there? You know, the, the American servicemen, the business people sure. are being lied to, being yeah. lied to. And sadly, people want to be lied to. You know, this is a really sad thing is that they'll do anything to see. embrace denial. They don't want to know. They don't want to exactly. deal with it. Exactly. They don't want to know. But the statistics are damning. 70,000 deaths a year in Japan, half the population of the U.S., from heart seizure. Well. In other words, people aren't just being murdered, they're, part, mm-hmm. you know, they're, they're, mm-hmm. they're, they're sort of, uh, they're implicating themselves in a suicide. It's a suicide murder that's going on. A terrible situation. Terrible All right, situation. let me, uh, with happen. that, let me bring on our other colleague and our associate, uh, yes. Dana yeah. Durnford, who is standing mm-hmm. by from uh, Canada, British Hi. Columbia. Are you there, Dana? Hi, Jeff. Hi, Yoshi. Hey there. Good stuff. Um, I got a lot of data on what you were talking about for later. Yeah, good. I think there's, you're real nailed it tonight. Uh, it does attack the heart. And I was reading those articles a few hours ago. Well, we want to hear about the otter situation up there. We haven't seen or heard much of your work about sea One animals. One thing about the otters here, which is uh, mm-hmm. another example of the lying, the official institutional lying that is the mm-hmm. bedrock of how the government and the states are dealing with this catastrophe. The USGS, California Sea Otter Stranding Network, uh, they Mm -hmm. say the number of sea otter strandings in 2014 was the highest in history, Uh, Mm -hmm. 18 above the uh, otters that were stranded in 2012. But here's the kicker. A stranded sea otter, what does that sound like to you? Oh, he's stuck up on a rock or something, right? No. A stranded sea otter is one that washes ashore dead or barely alive. <laughs> well, let's hope none of us get stranded on some way. island or a beach. Ahead, you know? ahead, Josh, oh, my gosh. You know, Robinson Crusoe, uh, he was stranded, but we didn't hear that he washed up dead. He washed up uh, pretty beat up, but he wasn't dead. <laughs> well, that's the semantic war that's being played against us. It's uh, really disgusting. Okay, yeah. Anyway... Uh, what about Japan and sushi? I, I've asked this before, but I want to know, are the sushi restaurants in Japan still doing a big business? they got to be. Yeah, the prices are down because a large section of the population will not eat. They've dropped eating fish now because they know uh, all kinds of fish are being smuggled in. And uh, a good friend of mine just came back from Japan, and he said, you know, the situation is so bad now. The government has such, got such a strong hand that even if you're on the Japan Sea Coast, you can't tell what a local fish is. The government basically is pushing radioactive fish all over the country, abroad to the U.S., to Hong Kong. That's why Taiwan and South Korea are trying to stop all of this. Yeah, but other countries yeah. are allowing it in. And uh, beef, too. You know, there's a big scandal now in Hong Kong about Yoshinoya. It's the Beef Bowl, the Gyudon restaurant, very popular, cheap place. But I heard, like, when I was in Japan back in December, they're, they're, they're putting Fukushima beef and Tohoku beef, radioactive beef, into their food. They're denied. And they're growing vegetables, onions, cabbages, and rice 
60 miles, 100 kilometers from the Fukushima nuclear plant. In their food. Hong Kong here, their branch is saying they're denying it. Oh, the radioactive stuff is only in Japan. Right. In other words, you, you got that, you know, the one in Hong Kong. Oh, we don't have radioactive food here at our chain here in Hong Kong. That's only in Japan. Wow. Is that an admission? Is yeah, that an admission? Yeah, 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 and we yeah. know they have been pushing. You see Kobe beef and all this stuff all over Thailand. Cheap. Uh, yesterday, I was in a noodle shop in Hong Kong. Scallops, clams, they're cheap, you know, like three bucks for a bowl of these things. You know, you just can't get those prices for the last uh, 30 years, okay? Mm-hmm. Obviously, when you see prices like that, discounted seafood, well, discounted beef, you know. stay away. It's yeah. from, you know, it's from northern Japan. It's radioactive. Well, do you know, they, they have got to have sick animals over there, but you don't hear about it here. I don't know if you hear about it there, but what they call it is a scary mystery illness, killing off animals, yeah. quote, at such a rapid rate on the West Coast. Hundreds yeah. of marine mammals found dead in small areas. Something, says the government, is likely affecting the entire ecosystem. Well, yeah. gee, well, I wonder what it possibly could be. They, yeah. they apparently have never heard of radioactivity or radiation and don't know anything about Fukushima. That's what they want us to believe. They know damn well, good and well exactly what's going on here. Exactly. Well, from Dana's reports, if they're not being killed by radiation so far, they're dying of starvation. Because everything else is being killed by That's radiation. right. There's no more scavenging fish out there to be had. Yeah. Uh, mm-hmm. Even if they were able to eat anything, they're still bioaccumulating radioactivity. So it's going to get them one way or the other. Go ahead, Dana. Yeah, sorry. Like you're saying, there's nothing out there for them to eat. Um, if I was to do the trip again and not take any groceries with me and try to survive on the coastline, I would starve to death in a week. Uh, there's nothing there to eat for me, let alone the uh, animals. It's, I mean, my, my goodness. You, you, you know? couldn't find anything, nothing. Nothing, no. You would starve to death anywhere I went. And I, I, wow. I made a conscious uh, thought about that each day was, mm-hmm. can I, like, everything that on the coastline could have fit, everything that I've seen in 15,000 miles and mm-hmm. 260 days, we could have fitted in the back of a transport truck. <laughs> oh, my God. I mean, it's gone. That's, that's, that's yeah, it's gone. horrific. Amazing. I mean, you know, when you add it all up through the whole coastline, you probably put it in a stadium. Yeah. And that's inconceivable, 26,000 islands. And, you know. It is and There's no shortcut about it. That uh, I just want to touch on, like Yoshi was asking earlier, real quick, and before I forget, was that the uh, sea otters were missing for most of the coastline, and a section of Vancouver Island did have them. They were young, mm-hmm. uh, but I didn't see them anywhere else through the coastline. And so when I was reading that today, that really struck home because I was saying to myself, how could they survive? You know, there was nothing there uh, for them to survive on. And I got right. stunning footage of them. Uh, you know, you can hear them eating the shellfish. Like Yoshi was talking about. Shellfish All right. Stuff. Well, that well, would make yeah. sense what Dana's saying because, yeah, of course you know, it the does, California yeah. and the uh, North Pacific current splits. It'll go past uh, the Canadian coast before it reaches Alaska. So this crisis is now in Alaska probably a year after or 18 months after the mm-hmm. major kill-off in Canada. Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. that does uh, uh, totally make sense in terms of the dynamics of the current. Yeah. What's going on with respect to the Olympics? Is anybody talking about the Olympics other than the usual well, rah-rah? A lot of people are very negative. The government of Tokyo, the Metropolitan has no money to sponsor the thing. The Japanese government is pushed very uh, thin because there's a lot of military spending. So, uh, you know, the Brazil Olympics is coming up. That's also problematic. You know, sewage in the water. So yeah, yeah. yeah. So hopefully that will begin to trigger the notion that environmental health is crucial for young athletes. You know, you so you think there's a chance toxic. that you think that, excuse me, you think there's a chance that uh, Japan may beg out of it for some reason or another? Well, they're not going to beg. Someone's going to have to, uh, you know, confront them. Uh-huh. And I think some Olympic committee, National Olympic committees and doctors groups are going to have to do that. I think a lot of people are waiting for the Brazil Olympics to be over uh-huh. before they 
deal with in the Japan. Tokyo. Yeah. But you know, you know, all of my findings and the, and, and, and again, I think it was. Uh, Fukushima diary that we picked up a story in Japan of the increasing radiation in the rainfall over Tokyo. Okay, mm-hmm. so radiation levels, atmospheric, because these typhoons are crossing from the Pacific Trench, they're bringing in radioactive rain in the Tokyo. So radiation levels are rising in Tokyo. It's clearly in the waters. Lots of report about that. The other problem that the other indicator we have of massive radiation off the coast of Japan as a threat to human health is that the U.S. aircraft carrier George Washington, a real new carrier, was sent back to the United States in September. And, you know, you got to understand, it's based at Yokosuka Naval, Air, uh, Naval Base, which has got a huge maintenance crew. It was the home port of the USS Kitty Hawk. Uh, so they could fix anything that's wrong with the George Washington. It could have been fixed in Japan, except for the desalination system, the water desalination system, yeah, uses the heat from its own nuclear reactor to make fresh water from seawater. Well, it's been replaced. It took months. It took three months to replace the George Washington. The Ronald Reagan is over there, and Shinzo Abe was standing aboard the Ronald Reagan two days ago at a, at a military exercise. Huh. And the Reagan, we know, yeah, yeah, he was there. Uh, I mean, this is really balls. This, this is like chutzpah, you know. It's so ball-based yeah, yeah. Yeah. trumpetry here that he can sit on the deck of the uh, Ronald Reagan when when the crew, the former crew of the uh, Reagan, are all dying, and he's not paying any compensation, not admitting any of the problems. And as we know that 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 desalination system poisoned everybody because the seawater could not filter out of the radionucleotide. So what what is the Reagan? What is the yeah. Reagan doing over there, Yochi? They had to replace the George Washington. The so George Washington's relatively new carrier. It mm-hmm. was sent back to San Diego uh-huh. for refitting, which it, is really is, ridiculous. Uh, but obviously, it's because of the desalination system. There's so much radioactivity in the drinking water sure, that it produces. Sure, they have to replace that whole darn system. And they're trying. I suppose they're trying to figure a way to. Uh, filter out radionucleotides, tritium. There's a lot of tritium in the water. So I expect the crew of the George Washington to have very similar problems as the Ray, uh, the Ray. Not as intense and immediately, but yeah. over time we'll see. Many of those sailors, seamen. And then it's just an outrage, a travesty, that they get this rust bucket, you know, the Reagan, which was completely gutted with radiation, to send it back to Japan and have American crew on there. Is, it, is it, No wonder Shinzo Abe is bored. He's so happy. So yeah, many sure. American soldiers or sailors are dying. It's wonderful revenge for World War II. Wonderful revenge for Shinzo. I'm sure he felt very good. He felt like Darth Vader. Ah, they're all dead men. They're all skeletons here. The unreal. Are gone. Unreal. Yeah, it is unreal. It's unreal, this Obama administration. It's just, I don't know what to say. You know, this is willful, really willful manslaughter. Oh, yeah, well, it's, uh, it is no. absolutely manslaughter, sure, and that's being yeah. kind. I think it's worse than that, but this is I mean, not going one to go. Thing, if you admit the problem, say this is what we're doing. Mm-hmm. We need some volunteers to do this stuff on a volunteer basis, okay? Older yeah. sailors or retired. That's one yeah. thing. That's one level, okay? But yeah. what they're doing is unconscionable. It's unconscionable. Of yeah, it's it's more than manslaughter. You know, this is it's murder. It's murdering. I I thing. agree. All right, uh, Yoshi. Thank you. It's the bottom of the hour. All right. Uh, great update as always. Uh, talk to you good. soon. You be well. Be safe. Take All care. Right. Thank you. Okay, okay, Dana. Happy sailing there. Yeah. Take care. Hugs for you, Yoshi. Yeah. Take it easy. Good night. Okay. There he goes. He's going to be tied up for the next couple three weeks on business and traveling. So uh, we've got Dana here, our other colleague, and we will be bringing you up to date, as always, every Monday. And the news just continues to get worse. But what's, what's really bad about the news is the lies in it. They are so blatant and so bald-faced and so in your face, it makes me sick. I am ashamed to read these stories, to see adults with PhDs, scientists, institute heads, University employees and professors lying. There's something big out there. We don't know what it is. And they can't guess. They can't even guess. Of course they know what it is. 
They, as I said, look please again at the homepage at rents.com right now. Look at the major piece of art at the top of the page. We call it our splash art. Take a look at it and understand that this is a new piece. You can click right underneath it and go to the full story to read it. This was out about a week and a half ago. And I want you to look at the concentration of radiation in the Pacific Ocean. This is supposedly an unpublished government map. Obviously, it's not finished But the part of it that is finished is gruesome because right off Vancouver and Seattle, it is at the top of it's pinned. It's at the top of the scale. Look at it and understand it. Uh, Go ahead, Dana. You've seen that map. That's uh, that's that's as grim as it gets. Just about that. That is frightening. And I was looking at that this afternoon. Uh, and it has one point of it. It's really hot stuff. And uh, so think of it, I think for people, the best way to look at this is think of a thousand mile oil spill and say it's a mile deep and it's, ro- it's going along your coastline with the tidal zone, with the tides. Say the tide is going two or three nautical miles an hour. Yeah. And it'll do that and deposit that all over the entire coastline. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, from one end of the country to another end of a country uh, and still have tons left over to, to maul all kinds of other countries and and sure. the estuaries and reefs and that, yeah. It's, so, like Yoshi was saying earlier uh, about heart attacks, there was two high school students died at the once in, in Japan in the same school. There was uh, seven people died on one street. Now, most people, when they die on a the street, they're not dying, uh, you know, of lung injuries or something like that, or diabetes in the sense. They're not hit by happen, cars. But they go into yeah. a... Uh, Sorry, they go into like a, a, a shock and these people dropped dead uh, on one shopping street in Fukushima Prefecture itself. The ambulances were going to uh, the reactors about 10 times a day. A reporter, actually a reporter had reported. But um, for heart attack wise, uh, CC-137 immediately, Jeff, you know that, I guess, immediately attacks the heart. It's 11 back mm-hmm. bulls for children. They start seeing damage, 50 back bulls a kilogram. Uh, and 11 Beckwolds kilogram, respectively. 50 Beckwolds, you'll see irreversible heart damage. Uh, hospitals in Fukushima were shown that 51% of the children originally were, were uh, peeing cesium-137, and that's all they were checking for. But 40% of the visitors at another hospital showed internal exposure uh, to radiation. I know I covered that many times uh, mm-hmm. over the last number of years. Mm-hmm. And it's just, when he's talking about heart attacks... Uh, and then there were studies done on 20,000. It was originally 14,000 in North America. And mm-hmm. then the babies, there were speculations on how many babies uh, had heart attacks and strokes from Fukushima. Uh, and people's pets, uh, uh, cats and dogs. That's something that we haven't mentioned often enough. They are also mammals. They are also dying. Many of the, the uh, dog and cat foods have uh, wild-caught salmon. Uh, before the tuna industry was crushed, it would have tuna in there. All kinds of just stock fish in the ocean that use protein from fish. Well, they can't do that anymore. It's radioactive, and it's killing off the animals. We're next. We're next. That's, we're next. Yeah, that's right. We're, we're, we're up the top of the food chain. And so we're like Jeff, yeah. you know, you always tell people we're bioaccumulating it heavily. Uh, 5,000 nuclear plant workers were uh, internally radiated and five ten thousand counts a minute. Uh, these are dead people walking. There's no cure for that. Five and, to ten thousand CPM, right? Um, wow. for, that's you know that's an guesstimate with what they're doing. Yeah. So the full yeah. body scanners that Yoshi was talking about earlier and the children and twenty seven hundred of them showed completely yeah. no. And now if you're in that environment, as you're looking at a million becquels a square meter, there's no way you're not ingesting <laughs> it. Right. There's no, no way you can't ingest no. it, can't walk through it. And so if it's in the square meter, then it's also in a cubic meter when you're, you know, that you're breathing. Um, and, and so like, uh, it's outrageous what they're doing to the Japanese people. They have, uh, rallied in the streets about hundreds of thousands repeatedly. And now the police will just bludgeon them. Uh, you see principals, you see hospitals telling concerned parents that they're foolish and that they've got to suck it up for the country and stuff like that. Uh, repeatedly headlines over, I got tons of headlines like that where they chastise parents and guardians and, you know, teachers are quitting because it's unconscionable that the students 
are going to school every day in these extraordinary environments that are worse than Chernobyl before. In fact, you can move out of Japan. Chernobyl is like a candle compared to Fukushima. You got it. Uh, yeah. I mean, workers dying all the time down there that are doing the decontamination. Then they take it and put it in a bag and bring it to an incinerator on another free prefecture and and toast and put it, it up in the atmosphere. Back Perfect. Into the environment. Yeah. Yeah. Really smart. Uh, this issue of animals dying in such enormous numbers up and down the West Coast. And I think I have seen one or two speculative comments. Oh, there might be some link to Fukushima, but they don't <laughs> know what it might be. These are scientists, and, and they all know. They know. I was laughing earlier. They know. And the EPA and Woods Hole, uh, they're measuring constantly. They got like a picket fence set up all along <laughs> the Pacific, off the coast of Oregon, Washington, California, up into the Gulf of Alaska. And they're measuring all the time. And aircraft are measuring in the air all the time. They know we everything. All, yeah, we bought all that. We got all the equipment here. They're using it. They're just not telling us. Correct. Yeah. Correct. Yeah. No, you're, you're 100% correct. And nobody bothers mentioning that. So I'm glad no. you brought it up. I had that's a map. truly the issue, isn't it? I, yeah, and I ran a map. I think I put it up as a splash, but uh, it looked like a fence. All the stations that they had put in the ocean, they're floating so on, attention. There's no on small buoys or whatever. But uh, absolutely collecting Since samples. Since Fukushima, the scientists yeah. here in Canada are not allowed to do an interview with a permission from Harper's office. He's so a real tyrant, that guy. Pans and banging on the pans because yeah. he didn't understand why they were being choked and stemmed. And that's still that's after after Fukushima happened and mm -hmm. right after it and it's still going on today, right? Uh, so they don't understand Fukushima even internally. A lot of people they just get the memo, and I've talked to these people and they say, "Well, I heard it was benign that it was innocuous and that uh, you know it's been studied heavily and that they, they didn't see any harm in it." Who said this? I, just some. This folks is that government to employees have repeated uh -huh. to me. They, they, huh. they came out with that party line, but they, that was the memo. Uh -huh. And they seem perplexed that I was studying that. And they seem concerned, too. I mean, these are just little people in the offices right. around right. Canada. But every one of them, including Fisheries, RCMP, Coast Guard that approached me, became concerned, became mm -hmm. alarmed. And like you say, you can't have a conversation about it without sounding like an alarmist, without sounding... People you know, don't, want, they don't want they don't want you around. They don't want to hear about that. No, that's right. No are way. You, I mean, what you're doing, you're on your front page, your center row, you're plugging it all the time. They can't be liking you very much. <laughs> no, no. No. I don't know what else to do. I, it's, it's so frustrating. All I can do is ask you people, all of you, even in Europe, no more eating fish. You don't know where it comes from. That's Truly, right. you don't. You got to just rule it out. And no, you see these one. Don't touch it. Don't touch it. Go ahead, Jeff. Yeah. Sorry. No, you see these ads uh, on the television. <laughs> I've seen a little television, uh, and they show lobsters and crab and fi fish for beautiful grilled fish. Uh, these these basically they're chains of restaurants, and they're tied to seafood, and they're just serving up death. There's the clearing blocks for unpublished government map. This is what's on the homepage at Rents. Unpublished government map shows massive plume of Fukushima radioactive material just off the west coast of North America. Radiation levels quadrupled in recent months, 400%. Scientists says we are starting to see the penetration of cesium from offshore to the coast itself. That means the beaches, okay? Here is another one. Catastrophic event could release radioactive fallout over major U.S. metropolitan area. Well, they don't say which one, but it's obviously Seattle. Government issues emergency plan as fire burns near nuclear site. Oh, this is a St. Louis story. I beg your pardon. Report, the world is on the brink of nuclear disaster. Is If that trash fire hits that underground repository of 55-gallon drums that have been down there 60 years, just buried with topsoil and dirt. Italy. Goodbye. Goodbye, St. Louis. Just that bad. Uh, it is unbelievable to me that a scientist could claim to be a scientist and approach this situation with such 
avowed ignorance. I don't know anything about it. We don't know anything about radiation. We're trying to figure this out. It could be a virus, a bacteria. It could be domoic acid from algae blooms. It could be global warming. But nobody says the R word. Dana, it's this guy. It's just getting to be kind of laughable. I mean, in a black, horrible way. It's not. It's it's just. It's not real. But it is. Well, they've been saying bananas, potato chips, and water and sunshine for 70 years, and all of a sudden, people, every time they say it in an article, they get pounded in the comment section. True, absolutely. And so they're losing yeah. their confidence, because it's a confidence game, right? They $5,000 suit and dirty underwear, they've got the prestigious jobs, but yet, like you say, they sound ridiculous <laughs> when they talk, you know? They do. Uh, and it's not only this, it's just that, we are more educated now. The average person is more educated than any ruler, you know, pre a hundred years ago was, and he was running countries. Anybody, in other words, anybody right now is, has the basic fundamentals of running a country. And so this is a, a very good a, point, a major stepping stone in the yeah. human evolution. Yeah. 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 Where anybody yeah. that's got some morals and some ethics, a little tiny bit of moral compass could be elected to, 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 to great responsibilities. Right. And, where before it was more about a power structure. Now it's about someone filling a job and interesting communities and that. But once again, the animals, and anybody's not really familiar, is we got all the herring are missing. The anchovies are missing. From the, the herring are gone. You heard you heard yeah. Dana right. They are gone. They're not the there. Sh- yeah, the shrimp are gone. The, the sh- krill are gone, which is a basic food. These are all basic foods of the migratory mammals and animals and the marine life itself. And of course, massive whale die-offs were all uh, krill eaters and they're missing something we predicted a couple, um, uh, more than one time on your show that this was the problem was they're not reproducing uh, the food of the, the web itself. So the 5,600 species typically uh, that are indigenous Canadian coastline, there, there's 4 million species in the ocean altogether, but they're the indigenous one, 5,600 species. If they were to uh, like say ice was coming along and scrub the coastline, well, there's room there now for 4 million other species just to seed the coastline because the ocean is the seed itself. A glass of water is a billion creatures and eggs and larvae and everything else. Mm-hmm. And and so the coastline is not receding itself anywhere. And so how can it be doing it in, in any other Pacific Rim nation? And we always talk, of course, in context of North America because we're North American. That's a huge area. We're not saying it's small, but it is all Pacific Rim nations are going to suffer this. China is not very far away. Vietnam is not very far away. The Philippines is not very far away from Japan. South Korea. And so they're suffering the same fates. Uh, Anybody in in the Pacific, those rim nations uh, in direct relationships, but it's going to spread to all the other oceans and and the water tables because we're all connected. Now, the animal die-offs, we've seen mass mortalities of uh, walruses, big animals, because they're feeding in those tidal zones, they're eating the clams the same as the otters are mm-hmm. uh, also. And the otters, uh, now all the kelp along the coastline was so disgusting, what well, was left of it, it was so rotted, that that was one of the things I had predicted. And that's why that was so eerie for me today to see about the, uh, the otters. It, because um, normally the coastline was packed with them, then they were wiped out and they were reintroduced. Mm-hmm. And the spot where they're reintroduced, they're still holding out. I was surprised, but everybody there was saying that they ate everything that was there, which is patently absurd. Uh, but the locals, that's, they, they had complained about the otters because there's around 16 of them hangs outside of this little Clackwood uh, community in the middle of nowhere on the west coast of Vancouver Island that I'm talking about that I, uh, several weeks or uh, two months back, we have come down the coastline of Canada for the mm-hmm. fifth expedition. And I had been in there and this is what they were saying to me. They were like a pest. And I never said nothing to him. I just let him talk. But, but uh, you know, I did say, well, that's kind of ridiculous. How could otters eat everything on the entire coastline? I said, you don't <laughs> suppose that uh, Fukushima might have something to do with it. Um, mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying, right? And, but that's really? what they they, they actually uh, believe that. My face was they the, actually uh, the believe otters. that. Yeah, they seem to consider him a pest, but they also that was a recogni- uh, recognizing Unreal. that there was nothing left there. Yeah. Uh, and they live in a really paradise, that little particular spot. Uh, but the whole coastline is missing all of its species. The birds are missing. The flana, the flora of all the high tide zone species were missing. These are different species. And then you got 
uh, the, the, all the algae, 600 algae, which is the very foundation of all the life was missing, except for a couple of the same algae throughout the whole coastline is all we found. Mm-hmm. And they were very sparse. And now they're starting to roll it out. It's looking like they're starting to slowly come out with it. Because like you've been going through the headlines, putting them at your site. And if you go look through them for, say, 20 minutes, you'll see all those correlations of mass animal die-offs and bird die-offs and whale die-offs. And it's always the same thing where everybody's scratching their head, big melon scratcher. It's uh, it's not a melon scratcher if you're honest, right? Is it, Jeff? No, not a chance. Sure. It's no, so no, it's but, so it's just so obvious. It, it's not even open for discussion. But you it can't sell the land is. in the UK because of Chernobyl, but Chernobyl was nothing. Chernobyl was one third the size, a thirty percent meltdown. Chernobyl stopped after ten days. Yeah. But Chernobyl's four hundred Hiroshima bombs, and so now I think. You know, once again, it's something that you're doing now is you're pushing the health side and these enriched small doses of, of uh, natural. The, the bio superfood, the yes. algae, which you can find on my homepage, look for the box, just my name is on it. I take it every day. I have for since this thing began. And I, I'm so grateful that it's available. And that kind of I've, stuff is what you need. I have yeah. uh, commercials running, urging you to take it every day, just three capsules a day, little tiny capsules, little green capsules of algae. And it was proven to work at Fukushima, save tens, hundreds of thousands of lives. No one will ever know for sure. But I've had the doctor on, Dr. Michael Kiriak, who, who literally created it, found out which algaes work the best with radiation and gave the best nutrition to the body to build the immune system. It's all there. We used to eat, on this planet, we used to eat 8,500 plants or so. Oh, and yeah. we basically eating seven, and these are GMO with all the potassium. All the spraying, the, the, iron and the carbon, sure, the pesticides, the herbicides, all the crap. Right, on top of that. Then it's got the formaldehyde and the glossophates, and they stop you from uptaking nutrients, and there's toxins and dioxins. Huh? In a lot of countries, they are definitely 100% illegal, because the studies down there weren't suppressed. And, but here in North America, our shelves are full. And so the only way to protect anybody can hope to get an edge is to being really healthy, uh, finding real food and, 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 you know, and like talking to water, structured water was an experiment that was repeated over and over. You can take muddy water. And turn it into structured water, which in structured water is just the way the molecules are lined up. But that's what your body is designed for. Your body is designed for a certain type of water through genetic superior selection. And right now everything has a chemical added to it and gone through a machine, which is electrically magnetized and everything else. And so the water changes the structure. But we've seen structured water reverse cancer in um, documentaries and that were done through major institutions. And repeat it a number of times. Uh, and this is what you drink in your home is like what Jeff is selling on his site and, and has talked about. And so many headlines you have put on your site, Jeff, of, of why something is good for you. Like turmeric, 1600 peer review academic studies on it. And it's just a spice. But I mean, GMO. Yeah, turmeric is GMO. great. Curcumin is even better. It's right. a refined of form of it. Yeah. Yeah, and you can eat a, a truckload of GMO and a spoonful of turmeric or whatever, like, you know, these natural uh-huh. enriched foods full mm-hmm. of minerals and macro and micronutrients. Uh, like I say, you would have to eat a truckload of GMO. You still couldn't get that same amount out of it that you could get out of a single spoonful or a few Isn't that drops. amazing? Yeah. And they, and they talk shocking. about Roundup and glyphosates and all the sprays. And the average head of lettuce is sprayed 13, 14 times before it hits your salad bowl. You want to eat that? I you want to feed that. that to your kids? Come That's on. child abuse, eh? That's what I always say. That I, I concur. Abuse, to give them GMO, give them a pop. I mean, there's no excuse for being ignorant. You got to do the research. You're a parent. <laughs> no, you have a responsibility to that child true. or children. It's your child that is, is on the line here. Not don't the do neighbors. It. Do it. You're going to do it yourself, do it yourself, but don't do it to the child. Child doesn't know any better. So that the parents I know. Absolutely. Thank you, Dana, as always. Thank you, my friend. Yeah.